jó nagy fogyó. Kapi Dusmé, Kapi.
by Chaplain Colt Randles. Please join with me as you see fit. Lord God, thank you for this beautiful day to celebrate the transformation that has taken place in the lives of these soldiers. Thank you for the professionalism and dedication on the part of our drill sergeants and cadre to ensure this training was done to standard. Bless these newest members of our Army family with the virtues required to leave a lasting and positive legacy in the units they serve and the homes they represent. This I pray in thy holy name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The purpose of today's ceremony is to recognize the commitment of the men and women you see standing in formation before you today who have chosen to serve their country as soldiers. This review is the last official formation of the training cycle. Not everyone successfully completes this difficult period of training, but those in formation today represent disciplined, motivated, physically fit soldiers who exemplify the Army's seven core values. Loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. They are imbued with the warrior ethos and display the tenets of putting the mission first, never accepting defeat, never quitting, and never leaving behind a fallen comrade. This is an important day and these soldiers can take great pride in their accomplishments. To the parents, families, and friends of these soldiers, Fort Jackson extends a very well, warm and sincere welcome. We are justifiably proud of them and are equally honored that they have chosen to join our ranks. Please direct your attention to the left of the formation. The units marching today from your left to your right are the 282nd Army Band under the command of Ward Officer Thomas W. Jackson, Jr. Graduating soldiers from the Honor Company, Company B, who have distinguished themselves and exceeded standards above and beyond. Graduating soldiers from companies Alpha, Delta, Charlie Echo, and Foxtrot are also standing before you today. Identified by their distinctive headgear are the drill sergeants. These dedicated non-commissioned officers form the backbone of the Army's training center system. Selected on the basis of professional competence, leadership, ability, and years of service, these men and women undergo intensive training to earn the right to wear their distinctive hat and insignia. With the drill sergeant hat goes the important responsibility of molding civilian men and women into soldiers. The commander of troops for today's ceremony is Captain Jason D. Albright, who serves as the executive officer for the 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment. He and the battalion staff are positioned on the field. The reviewing officer for today's graduation is the commander of the 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Scott E. Sansala. On his left is Command Sergeant Major Edward G. Ellis Kelsey, the senior non-commissioned officer, master trainer, and principal advisor to the commander. The Commander of Troops will now bring forward the colors and persons to be honored.
It is appropriate for soldiers in uniform and all armed forces veterans to salute the American flag. We ask our civilian guests to please remove your headgear and place your right hand over your heart as our national anthem is played. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Sansala and Command Sergeant Major Ellis Kelsey will now present the awards. The outstanding drill sergeant of the cycle for Company B is Drill Sergeant Kenneth Scott from Fulton County, Georgia. The honor graduate of the cycle for Company B is Private John W. McDonald from Redding, California. The highest score in basic rifle marksmanship for Company B, hitting 40 out of a possible 40 targets, a Hawkeye, is Private John C. Spaulding from Crown Point, New York. The highest score on the end of cycle physical fitness test for Company B, scoring 335 points on the extended scale, is PFC Benjamin J. Small from Gate Harbor, Washington. The outstanding drill sergeant of the cycle for Company A is Drill Sergeant James C. Kirkendall from Falls City, Nebraska. The honor graduate of the cycle and highest score on the end of cycle physical fitness test for Company A, scoring 329 points on the extended scale, is Private Ashley Michelle from Huntington Beach, California. Highest score in basic rifle marksmanship for Company A, hitting 37 out of a possible 40 targets, is Private Chase B. Lovin from Sagalville, Texas. The outstanding drill sergeant of the cycle for Company C is Drill Sergeant David J. Henderson from Benton, Pennsylvania. The honor graduate of the cycle for Company C is Private Joseph R. Spencer from Kansas City, Missouri.
The highest score in basic rifle marksmanship for Company C, hitting 38 out of a possible 40 targets, is Private Timothy S. Egan from Sparta, Georgia. The highest score on the end of cycle physical fitness test for Company C, scoring 315 points on the extended scale, is Private Jesse A. Wilson from Twin Falls, Idaho. The outstanding drill sergeant of the cycle for Company D is Drill Sergeant Ellen T. Lynn from Queens, New York. The honor graduate of the cycle for Company D is Private Joshua J. McNeil from Cody, Wyoming. The highest score in basic rifle marksmanship for Company D, hitting 38 out of a possible 40 targets, is Private Bodie R. Klein from Lincoln, Nebraska. The highest score on the end of cycle physical fitness test for Company D, scoring 391 points on the extended scale, is Private Brendan J. Skaggs from Fountain, Colorado. The outstanding drill sergeant of the cycle for Company E is William L. Smith from Fredericksburg, Virginia. The distinguished honor graduate of the cycle for 3rd Battalion, 34th Infantry Regiment, and the honor graduate for Company E is PFC Ryan P. McCullough from San Jose, California. The highest score in basic rifle marksmanship for Company E, hitting 39 out of a possible 40 targets, is Private Jared D. King from Midlothian, Texas. The highest score on the end of cycle physical fitness test for Company E, scoring 342 points on the extended scale, is Private Hyung Mun Kim from San Diego, California. The outstanding drill sergeant of the cycle for Company F is Drill Sergeant Brian S. Webster from Rutland, Vermont. The honor graduate of the cycle for Company F is Private Taylor A. Ochoa from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The highest score in basic rifle marksmanship for Company F, hitting 36 out of a possible 40 targets, is Private Jordan C. O'Grady from Staten Island, New York. The highest score on the end of cycle physical fitness test for Company F, scoring 317 points on the extended scale, is Private Joseph A. Martinez from Union City, California. The following individuals are receiving the Staff Support Award for Exceptional Professionalism and Dedication to Excellence in Support of the Accomplishment of the Unit's Total Mission. First Sergeant, Donald Kenny. Sergeant First Class, Daryl Van Gorkum. Sergeant Isom G. Weems. The following individuals are receiving the Service Support Award for demonstrating outstanding performance of duty while supporting the unit's non-training mission. Mr. Bruce Baker. Ms. Alexis Devries.
The following individuals are receiving the Dining Facility Award for demonstrating outstanding performance of duty while providing excellent service support for our soldiers in the Battalion Dining Facility. Mrs. Yolanda Doctor. Mr. Kenneth Harrison. Ms. Parnell F. Pearl. The following individuals are being awarded Family Support Award for demonstrating outstanding support to the success of the Battalion's Family Readiness Group. This is Dawn Van Gorgo. Mr. John Witten. Mrs. Maria N. McGee. Moving to the parade field for a special award is Lenora Stevens, escorted by her husband, Jim. To the family of Private First Class Adrian D. Watkins, who distinguished himself as an infantry soldier as part of Company C, 422nd Infantry Regiment during the Battle of the Bulge with the United States Army during World War II. On or about 16 December 1944, PFC Watkins was airdropped behind enemy lines in a densely forested Ardennes region in order to deny the enemy further aggressions on the Western Front. At great risk to himself, Private First Class Adrian D. Watkins, while providing defense from the enemy, was blown out of his foxhole by mortar fire and was captured by the German army. He was held as a prisoner of war from December 16, 1944 to June 9, 1945. To the family of PFC Watkins for his bravery and sacrifice in serving our country during World War II, it is our long, great pleasure and honor to represent or present you with a medal long overdue the United States Prisoner of War Medal. Thank you. 
help me in thanking the great drill sergeants of the Rock Force Battalion. <laughs> Soldiers on the field, there's one more group. You're about to join the largest military force on the face of the earth. So with all the veterans that are amongst us, past and present, please stand up so they can see who you are. All right, I know it's hot out here, so I'm going to make this quick. But first, I'd like to talk about a local kid. Someone who is no different than most of the soldiers standing in front of you. In fact, it applies directly to the soldiers in front of you, so I hope they're listening to it. Our subject lived just northeast of us here in a small town in Kershaw County, South Carolina. He was a foxhound breeder and a trainer who loved comic books. He was known for values that mirror what every soldier now knows today as the Army values, except he called them honesty, loyalty, caring, and integrity. He worked hard, he was well-liked, and did what was right. He was your average American kid. Like these soldiers on this field, he attended basic combat training here at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. He trained hard and became a soldier. If you were listening to the citation that was read earlier, then you've probably guessed that I'm speaking of Private Adrian Watkins, our POW MIA medal recipient. We've already had a medal presentation for Private, Private Watkins, so why continue to talk about him? Why? Because every soldier here is preparing to take the next step forward in their career. They're entering an army at a very uncertain time, where conflicts are winding down in the Middle East, while others spark elsewhere. Each of us took an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. The same oath as Private Watkins. But we don't know, always know when that time will come. Private Watkins heeded that call and was so focused on doing his job that he never heard the call to retreat and was taken prisoner by the German army, endured their treatment, and was returned home an even better man. Privates, when your time comes, things get difficult. Think back to the basics that you have learned here at Fort Jackson. They will keep you in good stead. Private Watkins relied on skills similar to the ones that each of you have been taught. And he was able to survive the rigors of living as a prisoner of war for six months in the harsh cold of a German winter. You have that same capability. You have that same warrior spirit. You are today's Private Watkins. As you walk off this field today, hold your head high. You have trained hard, and you are ready. To those in the stands, there are 33 million military-age Americans. Of these 33 million, less than 25 percent, one in four, are physically, mentally, and morally capable of serving in our armed forces. Of these select few, less than one percent will ever take an oath to serve in the armed forces. Standing in front of you are those soldiers that represent that 1%. To the soldiers, one final... Oh. Oh. All right, that's not two of them To the soldiers on the field, one final quote from General Pat. You are never beaten until you admit it. Congratulations, you have made it. Thanks for joining us today, Rock Wars. You have become what you set out to be, a soldier in the United States Army.
The Soldier's Creed is your declaration of your unshakable commitment to the ideals this nation was founded upon and will continue to guarantee. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as PFC Ryan P. McCullough leaves the soldier standing before you for the reciting of the Soldier's Creed. consideration of those around you, we ask that you please remain seated and in the bleachers until all soldiers have passed the reviewing stand and the conclusion of the ceremony is announced. Once the ceremony has concluded, family members of the awardees may meet their soldiers under the canopy located to the left of the bleachers. All other family members and friends, please meet your soldier at the far right of the bleachers at the end of the parade field. Passing the reviewing stand is the Commander of Troops, Captain Jason D. Albright, and the battalion staff. The 2nd Army Band, commanded by Warrant Officer Thomas W. Jackson, Jr. The Fort Major is Staff Sergeant Andre Gonzalez. Commanded by Captain Antonia V. Andrews from Kings Tree, South Carolina. Second platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Jonathan Morgan from St. Louis, Missouri. Third platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Maka Tuianatoa from the Kingdom of Tonga. Platoon is led by Drill Sergeant James Ash from Redlands, California. In the rear of the formation is the First Sergeant, First Sergeant Edward L. Eagle from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Company A is commanded by Captain Chad M. Hedrick from Turpin, Oklahoma. 
platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Denise Lewis from Bass Retrieve St. Kitts. Second platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Thomas K. Lowry from Alexandria, Virginia. Third platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Matthew A. Staff from Rockford, Illinois. In the rear of the formation is the First Sergeant, First Sergeant Joseph R. Delage from Applegate, Michigan. Somerville, South Carolina. First platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Cornell A. Reddick from Chicago, Illinois. Yeah, cool. Second platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Sean C. Sweeney from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It is appropriate to rise and remain standing until it is passed to your right. Company D is commanded by Captain Kirk F. Foster from Queens, New York. First platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Justin D. McKay from Seattle, Washington. Second platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Brian S. Skelton from Denver, Colorado. Platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Ricardo D. Briscoe from Atlanta, Joel from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Third platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Shella Rose from New York, New York. First platoon is led by Drill Sergeant James T. Schmidt from Decatur, Illinois. is led by Drill Sergeant Ariel Rivera from San Juan, Puerto Rico. In the rear of the floor is the First Sergeant, First Sergeant Edward C. Elliott from Wake, North Carolina. Company F is commanded by Captain Ryan S. Knott from Atlanta, Georgia. Frederick P. Jarecki from Holton, Michigan. The second platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Brian McFarland from Marion, South Carolina. is led by Drill Sergeant Jose A. Martinez from Los Angeles, California. In the rear of the formation is the First Sergeant, First Sergeant Wayne V. Garcia from Eugene, Oregon.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the Army song and please remain in the bleachers until the conclusion of the ceremony is announced. ceremony. Family members of awardees, please meet your soldier under the canopy to the left of the bleachers. All other family members and friends, please meet your soldier to the far right of the bleachers at the end of the parade field. We ask that you please remember to take all trash and personal items with you. I guess I'll have to I guess I'll have to